Do you, you all know the prayer of faith? It's by Hannah Moore Kohlhaus. And it says, God is my help in every need. God does my every hunger feed. God walks beside me, guides my way through every moment of the day. I am now wise, I am now true, patient, kind, and loving too. All things I am, can do, and be through Christ the truth that is in me. God is my health, I can't be sick. God is my strength, unfailing quick. God is my all, I know no fear, since God and love and truth are here. It's a beautiful poem. It's a beautiful prayer. I recommend we all use it more frequently and see what it means to us. It's not just about saying a prayer and assuming, oh, that's good, because I like the sound of it. It's, I, I have to look at these things and say, do I believe it? Do I want to believe it? Okay, is it useful? Does it apply to my thinking? Does it apply to my behaviors? And so to look at it that way and, and then ask. And, and then if it does, then keep using that prayer. I, I you know, we are we are guided to avoid vain repetition. And I agree. But there are some prayers that are not vain repetition because every time we say them, they uh, have a deepening meaning. And so it's good to pay attention to that sort of thing. And I called today's talk, You're the Cake. You're already the cake. You're already the cake. I have a good friend. Her name is Gail Dennison. Some of you have met her. Uh, she was in my show at the Metropolitan Room a couple of years ago. And uh, Gail, Gail's a good friend. And Gail is a mentor to me. And uh, she got, just because she's so wise, just because she's so much fun, because I, we sit at a diner and we sit and talk about things or now we sit on the phone and we talk about things and we, we laugh at our foibles and we laugh. And I so appreciate hearing some, many of her solutions. Gail also teaches at a theatrical school and I don't remember which one. But a few months ago we were talking about things and she said, Sean, one of the things I, my sister used to say to me and now I say to my students, you're already the cake. Now it's all about icing. But you don't have to bake the cake. You're already the cake. And when I heard it, I said, can I use that church too much? She said, absolutely. Pass it along. And, 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 it, and it's true. I, we are already the cake. We are already God beings. Now, what kind of icing are we going to use or have we been using? And would we like to get rid of that icing? Because the cake can be re-iced. The cake that is us can be re-iced, refrosted, redecorated. And, and, and so I'm already the cake. I don't have to invent God in me. I don't have to invent light. I don't have to invent love. I am. Whatever God is, I am. And so to get on board with that and relax for the day. What if for today, no icing? Today, I'm just cake. I am the heart of the cake. I am the cake itself. I am all the goodness and all the ingredients that it takes to make the cake. And so to look at that, and uh, well, I looked at that, and I, and I found a few things, and I, I, I looked up something by Emily Cady, who wrote Lessons of Truth, and I'm going to read part of of it. I'm going to read the whole article. And, and the, the article is called All Sufficiency in All Things. And it starts here, the Holy Spirit abiding within us is able to do all things for us. Occasionally a metaphysician in whom the intuitional, in, in, intuitional is largely developed is beginning to apprehend it as a demonstrable truth and carefully avoiding all pious words, lest he be considered in the old rut of religious beliefs as the outer of visible man has no need that the inner or invisible man cannot supply. Excuse me, with itch. That thrilled me, that statement, not the itch, that statement. That statement absolutely thrilled me. The outer skin, what have you, a visible man has no need that the inner or the invisible man cannot supply. Remember all those ingredients I talked about in the cake? They provide the inspiration for the outside. They 
provide the divine ideas. The inner invisible me is what provides me with the ideas of how to ice the cake. Is the inspiration for the icing, as it were. Well, we're going to wear that one out today. The spirit of the living God within us, fed ever from the, well, she calls it all father, I'll call it all God. Fountainhead is not only the giver of all good gifts, the supplier of all supply, but is the gift itself. We must come right up to this point. The giver and the gift are one. And so it's not, oh, I have to be so grateful to God for having given me so much. God is the gift. God didn't really have a choice. God is God. This is what God is and does and has done. It just is itself. And we are a part of itself. We are a layer in the God cake, as it were. And, and so to think of it that way, oh, God is the gift. It's not, oh, please, God, give me these gifts. It's, oh, the gift is within me. And so therefore, from what is within me, any need I would have around my life is available from within me. Now, if I need luggage, I can't very well pull a set of luggage out from my internal self, but I can pull the divine idea of how to acquire luggage from within me. So, you know, I see it's foolish now to start declaring anymore, I don't know. I don't know how to do that. Well, I do. I usually don't want to do that. But I, and I don't care to exercise the muscle to really learn how to do that with finesse. But if, since, not if, since God is knowledge itself, and God is knowledge itself, I know. I know the solution to this. I know how to do things that I don't want to know how to do. I, I know how to create bring about harmony amongst all nations, amongst all people. And I know that it starts with me. I, I know because God is the gift itself. What's more, you know. And I don't often let people off the hook anymore. I'm not nasty about it anymore. I said, but you know, if I know that you know, believe me, if I know, you know. And so I'd rather us not pretend anymore to not know. And the funny thing is, I might not be able to word it. I'm doing interviews this week for ministers who have been applied and been admitted into the program, various programs or paths towards coordination in Unity Worldwide Ministries. And there's something in the rubrics that a new mentee of mine brought up. And it's a term... Accelerated learning method. And no one I found yet knows what that means, and yet it's in the rubrics. So I, I'm still writing to people, do you know? Do you know? Because I'd like to be able to tell my mentee, I, I am so not familiar, I can picture what it must mean, but if it's an official term and there's a uh, path, you know, a pathway through it or something, uh, we need to, we all need to, to be able to articulate what it is. Now, what I know, while I may not be able to tell you I know exactly what that is, I know how to reach out at, to several people until I get the answer I need. See, I, I, I uh, or maybe I don't need the answer, the answer I want. In this case, why do I need that? I don't need it. I want it. I want it. I feel it will enhance my existence for at least a minute. And so therefore... <laughs> Uh, I as often and if in the future, if anybody asks, I can say, oh, well, it means this. Or if it doesn't apply, we need to take it out of the rubrics. And, and so there's always a solution. And that's the thing. Within us is the solution for a perceived problem. And, and sometimes uh, the solution is be still and know. <laughs> uh, so moving on in this, one recognizes God within him or herself as indwelling purity and holiness to such a, a, uh, a being. He is, a, he is sanctifi sanctification 
and just in proportion to the recognition and the trust with which the divine presence is regarded as imminent holiness does it spring forth into the outer everyday life of the man or woman as holiness so that even they who run may read something more than human in him. Another recognizes and accepts the God within himself as the life of his body, and instantly this divine life, always perfect, strong, and vigorous, and always de de desiring with the mighty desire of omnipotent love to manifest itself through somebody or something as perfection begins to flow through his body from center to circumference until the entire body is charged with a fullness of life that is felt even by others who come in contact with him. This is divine healing. And the time required for the process of complete healing depends not on any changeableness in God. For God knows no time, but the eternal now, but entirely on the ability of the person to recognize and trust the divine power that works in him or her. So what it says is we need to get busy. If we want healing, we need to get busy and learn about healing, get understanding, talk to others, read about others who have had healings. What was their process? What was their practice? And then go within and say, is my practice to be the same as Myrtle Fillmore's? Or is there another practice that would be have a greater quickening power for me? Is there a different practice? Shall I say different prayers? Shall, or shall I say the same ones of those uh, as those who have healed before me? Uh, we've now proven healing is possible. Now I must prove it for myself. And, and in that prayer, it will be revealed, perhaps step by step, but it will be revealed. That's why I like the conversation with spirit on a daily basis. I can continue to ask these questions and I get answers or I get guidance or suddenly during the course of the day, I know things that I wasn't aware I knew. And I know them with an attitude that is far more pleasant than it used to be in the old days. And, and, and so to look at that, the one who recognizes the indwelling God as his holiness, but cannot mentally grasp any more of truth, lives a holy, beautiful life, but perhaps lives it all through years of bodily disease and sickness. Another who recognizes the same imminent God as his health and is made both holy and physically well by the recognition and acceptance stops there and wonders when he is well and is living a life entirely unselfish and godlike, why he should always be poor, lacking even the bare necessities of life. And Ms. Katie goes on to say, O oh, foolish man, and slow of heart to believe, can you not see that this same indwelling God, who is your holiness and your health, is also your sustenance and support? Is he not our all-sufficiency in all things? Is it not the natural impulse of the divine being to flow forth through us into all things and to attract to us all things, all things good, whatsoever ye pray and ask for? Is there any limit except such as our poor human minds have set? Does he not say every place that the sole of your foot shall tread upon to you have I given it? What does this mean? Is it not saying whatsoever you dare to claim that will I be to you? Has anybody here ever manifested anything? Of course you have. I have. First of all, I manifested a body. I manifested uh, everything physical that's in my life. I've manifested a world. And to think that there's nothing more that I could manifest. Oh, I've got my quota. God has given me all that I could have. God gave me everything in the beginning. In the beginning. Now it's about within me is the power to manifest. It is also within me to block that, that ability. I Just a simple word saying, I can't. Well, but I can. I can manifest divine health. I can manifest divine wealth. I can manifest uh, divine harmony and peace and joy and light.
I don't know that I have the power to change everybody else's mind. I really don't. But I do know that within my own mind, I can experience great things when I see other people. So it seems like they're manifesting chaos and confusion. The thing is, I don't want to join the ones manifesting chaos and confusion. I don't want to judge the ones manifesting chaos and confusion. It's not my place to judge it. It's I, I don't know what that's about, but I don't want to use it to join in. I, I, I talk to the powerful manifestors, the ones that seem to manifest a great peace and joy in life. The ones who do manifest greatly in the physical, but they don't make that the object of their existence. You know, the stuff cannot be my God. The stuff is here to be enjoyed. It's here to be appreciated. It is not here in order for me to make an identification out of it. It is not here for me to elevate myself above anybody. I know that if I can manifest, everybody can. Oh, believe me, I know. And uh, and so I, I I like manifesting. It's fun to prove God real and God, God true, to, to use the power within me, my inner self, to reveal uh, around me divine possibility, the divine potential. Because that, you see, each time I do that, I prove the power of God. I prove the power of life. I prove the power of love. It's not that I'm in special favor because I manifest. It's because I have used the principles of manifestation appropriately and properly and accurately. Because I know how many times I have used them or misused them inappropriately, inaccurately, and sat around disappointed that I didn't manifest. I was like, what's going on there? I have healed colds within me, boom, up out of my system. Not every one, but I have, uh, I've healed them. I've had other healings. I've had physical healings. I've had mental healings. I've had emotional healings. I have proven the power of these principles, true, on many, many, many occasions. I have also sat around confused as to why I couldn't approve them true this time. If you look at Unity's co-founder, Myrtle Fillmore, she had a mental healing of about tuberculosis on an evening in 1886. Uh, uh, I am a child of God, therefore I do not inherit sickness. It took two years for the body to fully show up to where there were no traces of tuberculosis, there were, where there was nothing to prove the doctor that gave her a three to six month life sentence two years before. There was nothing in there to prove uh, her doctor, her doctor correct. She wanted to prove God. And so she made the declaration, I am a child of God. Therefore, I do not inherit sickness. And why would she make such a statement? Because when it was said to her, it rang true. Well, wait a minute. God's not sick. Whatever God is, principle, divine principle is not sick. Divine love does not get sick. Divine peace and joy do not get sick. They get ignored. They do not get sick. And so therefore, as a child of God, I do not inherit sickness. That's spiritual logic to me. God can't be sick and I'm God's child. I do not inherit sickness from God. And so if I don't inherit sickness from God, where do I get sickness from? I get it from unconsciousness. As she, as she said here, there are those who are lovely God beings, and they say the nicest of things all the while being sick in the body or being poor of purse. And it makes no sense. And it's because they're still not applying the laws of health, the laws of wealth, the laws of harmony. You know, we, there are laws to all of this. Remember, we're already the cake. We're not inventing law. We're seeking to practice. We're seeking to get understanding of the law and that we may apply it. It's, here, here's the law of icing a cake. You do not ice a hot cake. You do not put icing on a cake just out of the oven. The icing will melt because there is a, a physical law to that. That's not even metaphysics. That is a physical law. That cake will turn, or that icing will turn 
to molecules if it's, if it's a put on a hot cake. And so you let the cake cool. Uh, and then you take it out of the pan and then you, you know, you, there are steps to be done with this, but the cake is still the cake. I'm the cake. You're the cake already. We were born the cake. We were born with all the ingredients of the cake within us. Now we must un understand, we must get on board with the metaphysics of being the cake. That's good. I like that. <laughs> so uh, there's a prophet named Elisha. You may have heard of him. He says, when, when Elisha... Oh, no, let's go back one more paragraph. It is not enough to believe simply that God is our supplier. The one who shall, by his omnipotent power, influence the mind of someone possessing an abundance to divide with us, this belief is limitation. God's being our health means far more than God's being our healer. God as our supply is infinitely more than God as our supplier. Do we all grasp that? It's not that God heals me. God is health itself. And so I need to identify as health itself, knowing it is within me to heal. It is completely within me, 100% to heal. Now, Elisha, he multiplied the widow's oil. He did not, recognizing God's supply as the supplier, ask and then, and then for answer receive a few barrels of oil. No, there was infinite oil in that for that woman. Because if there hadn't been, eventually, we'd run out of oil. The town would have run out, the woman would have run out, or as she put it, destitute of oil. Elisha understood the divine law of supply and put himself into harmony with it. Then God himself, the substance of all things, became manifest as the unlimited supply, a supply that could easily have flowed until this present time had there been need and vessels enough. Some of us don't think there's enough love for us. I'm thinking of one instance of my life that I'm not going to be too specific about. This individual has chosen to remain angry with me for several years now because I didn't show up the way they wanted me to several years ago. Now, I showed up the way I thought I, I ought to, and I may change that all these years later. I may still approach this person. I, I haven't decided. But this one, but I'm not mad at the person, quite frankly, but this one has stayed angry and separate from me because they felt I should have done something, and they forgot the power to heal this relationship if they had wanted that healing was in, within them all the time. I've healed many a relationship in my life because I wanted to heal it, because I wanted peace between us, because I missed that individual. There are others I don't miss. I'll be honest. There are certain personalities I don't miss. I don't miss the demands on me. I don't miss certain things. But this one I know missed me. And still they would not come to me and say, I'm just in hell over this, Sean. What can we do to have peace? And we would have worked on it together. And uh, this one, we're very friendly when we see each other, but that peace is missing uh, between trusting and liking and not, and not realizing, oh, the power is within me to heal if I want to heal. And so I think that's the answer, we, uh, the question we have to ask. Do I want to heal? Do I want it? I know it's possible now. Sean told me so. Before me, I, I have many ministers who told me so. I know it's possible to heal. Do I want to? And some people think, oh, I can't give up my pride to heal. And it's like, oh, by all means, give up your pride to heal. You, you know, you're not going to be humiliated. You're going to be embraced if you want to heal. If you really want to heal, you will absolutely be embraced in life. I know because I always have been. Any healing I have pursued, I have been embraced. Whether it is an emotional healing, a harmonious healing, a, uh, what do you call it, uh, a financial healing, uh, a physical healing. I have been embraced by many, many individuals who have, uh, they knew about healing or they wanted it also. And, and so... 
I, I do know that this is so possible. This is the last paragraph here. Better than he knew spoke the poet when he said, Earth has no sorrow that heaven cannot heal. Heaven is not a faraway place to which we shall go after death when a whole lifetime has been spent in sorrow and trouble. It is this. Kingdom of God within you here now today. The mortal human, earth part of you, has no sorrow that cannot be healed. Overcome. Wiped out at once and forever by this ever-indwelling Holy Spirit. If any man would hasten the day of every man's deliverance from all forms of human sorrow and want, let him at once begin to withdraw himself from outside sources and external warfare and center his thoughts on Christ the Lord within himself. God is in the midst of thee, a mighty one. Acquaint now thyself with God and be at peace. Thereby, good shall come unto thee. Prove me now if I will not pour you out a blessing that there shall not be room enough to receive it. Let us prove God. Commune, commune with your own heart upon your bed and be still. Be still and know. Be still and trust. Be still and expect my soul wait thou in silence for God only, for my expectation is from God. Today, I expect unexpected good. Today, I expect unexpected income. Today, I expect unexpected health. Today, I expect unexpected icing. Today, I expect unexpected love in manifestation. Today, I expect the holy realization that I am the cake. I am God in action. I am good in action. I am life in action. I am peace in action. I am joy in action. I am what God is. So you see, all the ingredients of the cake are within me. Because the cake is God. And now, let us ice it, enjoy, and fun, and play, and divine contemplation. Let us ice it with all the gifts of this world we have created. Let us put down our sword and our shield, realizing there is no cake to be made. It's already been made. There is no battle to be fought. There is no battle. There is no war. There is no opposite of God. There is no opposite of love. We are already all the good that we were ever going to be. So for today, let's go ahead and realize it. And let our light so shine. Thank you.